All right, continuing with the exponents and logarithms chapter, this will be taking the log of both sides of the equation. And this is when you have different bases on both sides. All right, first example here, example one, we wanna solve for X. And you can see on the left, we have base three, on the right, we have base two, okay? So it really wouldn't make sense to use either one of those because you're gonna to have to go to the calculator at the end on a problem like this. So we are either going to use, we're either going to use the regular log, which is log base 10, or we're going to use ln, which is log base E, the natural log. Okay, so you can do either one on this one because uh, both of these should be on your calculator. So I'm gonna use the natural log here. I'm gonna do the natural log of both sides of this equation. All right, so I'm gonna do the ln of three to the power of two x, and I'm gonna do the ln or natural log of two to the power of x plus one. All right, the reason I did that is because we can use the power rule or the exponent rule to isolate the exponent. See, in both cases here, the x is in the exponent, so we wanna isolate that. All right, now that we took the log of both sides of the equal sign or the natural log, we can use the power rule and bring the exponent out front on both sides of the equal sign. We can bring that exponent out front. All right, so here we're gonna have two X times LN of three. All right, this is two X times LN of three. And on the right-hand side, the exponent X plus one is out front. And that's gonna be times LN of two. All right, now we're gonna need to um, isolate X. We're gonna have to have the X's on one side and the numbers on the other. All right, LN of three and LN of two are both numbers. And let's see, here, these are all multiplied. This is two times X times LN of three. All right, when you multiply, the order doesn't matter. So I am gonna write this as two, ln of three times x. Okay, two ln of three is just a number once you use the calculator. So all I did was rewrite this, but I changed the order of the multiplication. And on the right, we're gonna have to distribute. ln of two times x. And then we're gonna do ln of two times positive one. That's just positive ln of two. All right, and again, we need x's on one side and numbers on the other. So this is the only number here. We're gonna have to get rid of ln of two x. So I'm gonna subtract ln of two times x from both sides. All right. It cancels here, and we have two ln of three times x minus ln of two times x. It looks weird, all right, it looks strange, but two times ln of three is just a number. It's just a coefficient on x, and so is this, and that is going to equal ln of two, because this canceled. All right, and now factoring. We have this mess times x, and we have this mess times x. So if we factor out the x, we have two times ln of three minus ln of two. All right, those are both times x. We just factored out the x, and that equals ln of two. Finally, last step, solving for x, we divide 
both sides by this mess in parentheses. 2 ln of 3 minus ln of 2. And that's 2 times ln of 3 minus ln of 2. All right, so I just divided both sides by the same thing. On the left, the same thing over itself cancels. We have the x, and we need to do this on the calculator, okay? If you d hit divide on the calculator, make sure you use parentheses in the denominator. All right, so let's go to the calculator on this. I'm assuming we're going to have to round off. Okay, so we said ln of 2, close parentheses, divided by, and this whole denominator is in parentheses, 2 times ln of 3 minus ln of 2, close parentheses twice. Okay, so this is my numerator divided by, and this whole thing is my denominator. Click equals, and rounding to four, I have 0 0.4608. All right, so I'll use these squiggly, squiggly lines instead, and we said 0 0.4608. So that is X rounded off to four decimal places. All right, example two, we're solving for X once again. We have a base 10 and a base six. Now, you can use either the log or the natural log on both sides because both of these are available on the calculator. However, it might be a little easier to use the regular log, okay? And that's because this log is log base 10 and we have a 10 right here. It would still work if you used LN, but if you use log base 10, we can get rid of the 10. All right, so let's do log base 10 on both sides here. I'm going to do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. I'm going to do the log of 10 to the power of x plus 4, and that equals the log of 6 to the power of 3x minus 1. All right, remember when you have the log with no base, that's automatically log base 10, okay? You don't have to write it, but I'm just writing it to show you. On the left-hand side, the log base 10 matches the base of this 10 here, so those cancel, and you are just left with the argument of x plus 4. On the right-hand side, remember the thing you're taking the log of, you can apply the exponent property or the power rule to that argument, okay? So this argument here has an exponent of 3x minus 1. We can take that and just move it out front, all right? So that's going to be 3x minus 1 times the quantity of the log of 6. All right, like I said, you don't have to write the 10. I just had it there to show you. All right, so we have x plus 4. And we need to separate x's, variables, and constant terms, all right? So we have 3x distributing here, 3x times the log of 6. And we have negative 1, log of 6 times negative 1. That's going to be negative log of 6. Now, I'm going to do an extra step, extra step here just to show you. Okay, remember we're trying to collect x's on one side and constant terms on the other. So this is 3 times x times log of 6. When you multiply... The order does not matter, okay? If you did a 
times B times C, that's the same as A times C times B, okay? The order of multiplication does not matter. So I am going to rearrange this so the X is at the end. We have the 3, and that's times log of 6, and that's times X. So in other words, we have 3 log of 6 times X, and that's minus log of 6, and over here is X plus 4. All right, again... If it were me, I would have done that step right here when I distributed, but I wanted to show you the extra step. All right, numbers on one side, letters on the other. So here, plus four, that's a constant term, no variable. The opposite is minus four. And I do that to both sides. And it cancels here. All right, and you know what? I need a little more room. All right, since this has the x, an x term on it, I want to get the x's on the left. I got the constant terms on the right. So the opposite of positive 3 times log 6x is going to be minus 3 times the log of 6x. Okay, I need to do that to both sides of the equal sign. So that's minus... 3 times the log of 6 times x. All right. So this is two separate sides of my equal sign here. On the right, the same term minus itself. That cancels. On the left, we are left with x minus 3 times log of 6 times x equals negative log of 6 minus 4. All right, now we have to factor out the x. So this is basically 1x, right? This is 1 times x, same thing. So if we, And this has an x in it as well. So if we factor out the x, we have 1x minus 3 log of 6. All right, so I just factored the x. See, if you distribute x times 1, that's 1x. x times negative 3 log of 6 is negative 3 log of 6 times x. All right, so I just factored it out. And that equals log of 6 minus 4. Finally, solving for x, the opposite of times this mess is divided by this mess. 1 minus 3 times the log of 6, 1 minus 3, times the log of 6. Okay, on the left, the same term over itself cancels. We're left with the x. We're going to enter this on the calculator. And I guess usually we did four decimal places. So I'm going to enter this on the calculator. Please use, I suggest you use parentheses, top and bottom. All right, so you keep the numerator and denominator together. So let's go to the calculator. All right, parentheses. Negative log of 6, parentheses, minus 4, close parentheses. That's my numerator. Divided by parentheses, 1 minus 3, times log of 6. Close parentheses twice. This is my numerator. This is my denominator. Okay. 3 times log of 6. 3 log of 6. Same thing. You, you might have to write times. All right. I don't know how your calculator works. I write times just in case. Click equals. If I look at the fifth decimal, that's a 0. So I can just round down 3.5806. All right, x is approximately 3.5806. All right, this will be applications of logarithm and exponential equations. 
Example one, how long will it take for $1,000 to grow to $1,500 if it earns 8% annual interest compounded monthly? Okay, so if you recall, we had a formula to get the amount when something is invested, the thing invest, the amount invested is the principal, and that's going to be one plus the interest rate R divided by the number of compounding periods n to the power of n times t. All right, if you want to refresh your memory on those terms, the A is the amount, okay? I really like to think of it as the accumulation, like how much money you accumulated, or you can say amount. All right, the P, we, we remember that is principal. That is how much you invested in the first place. R is the interest rate. N is the number of compounding periods. Or I should say the number of compounds Per period and T is the time so what do we have here they're asking us how long will it take so that's gonna be the time let me let me make some room here they're asking us how long will it take so clearly that is the time T we're looking to solve. For $1,000, that's the initial investment. To grow to 1,500, that's gonna be the accumulated amount. So the 1,500 equals A, and R is the interest rate, 8% converted to a decimal is 0 0.08. And if it's compounded monthly, that's number of compounds per period. How many times is does monthly occur per year? Well, that's 12. All right. So we have um, 1,500 equals A. We have 12 compounding periods per year. Now, you can certainly solve this for T before you plug in any numbers, okay? So if you want to do it algebraically first, get T equals and then solve, you can certainly do that. I don't want to confuse anybody, so I'll do it the basic way for now, okay? A is the accumulation. That's going to be 1,500, 1,500. P is the principal amount invested, 1,000 times the quantity of one plus, or the interest rate we said was 8% or 0 0.08. And that's divided by the number of compounding periods, which is 12. All right, 8% is the annual interest rate, but it has to be divided by 12 because it's applied on a monthly basis. It's compounded monthly. And that's times 12 to the uh, to the T, 12T. All right, so that's what we're working with. Now, we can certainly take the log of both sides at this point. However, since this term in parentheses is the only item that has the exponent on it, I want to take the log of just this part in parentheses. So I'm going to get rid of the 1,000. Okay, the opposite of times 1,000 is divided by 1,000. So I'm going to do that to both sides. And it cancels here and here. Now, since the T that I'm trying to solve for is in the variable, I need to get this out of the exponent. 
So if I do the log on both sides, I can use the power rule and move the exponent out front. All right, so I'm going to do the log of both sides. Now, I know this is 1.5. I'm going to leave it as is for now because you might not always be able to um, do the fraction. You might not always be able to make the fraction into a decimal. So I'm going to leave it for now. All right, so I'm doing the log of both sides. Log of 1,500 divided by 1,000 is going to equal the log of 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 12. to the power of 12t. All right, now we're in business. So since we have the 12t on the exponent, I'm gonna use the power rule and take that 12t and move it to the front. All right, so that's gonna be 12t times the log of that mess right there, all right? So the 12t got moved to the front. And we are trying to solve for t. I am going to rewrite this so it's cleaner, okay? On the left, we still have the log of 1,500 divided by 1,000. And on the right, these are all multiplied. We have 12 times t times the log of this mess. Recall we said previously, if you have um, if you have a times b times c, you can mix up the order, it doesn't matter. You can do a times c times b. The order does not matter, okay? Same thing here, these are all multiplied. I want the t isolated, so I'm gonna separate the t. I'm, go I'm gonna use the 12 first, and that's going to be times the log of this mess right here, 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. And this whole thing, I'm going to use brackets now, this whole thing is still times t. All right, I just rearranged it so you can see it better. And now, finally, solving for t, since t is multiplied by this mess, we're going to divide by this mess. 12 times the log of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. On the other side, same deal. 12 times the log of 1 plus 0 0.08 over 12. All right, on the right-hand side, the same term divided by itself cancels. It's just a 1. And we are left with a T. Perfect. So we're going to do this on the calculator. All right, hit clear. In the numerator, I'll use parentheses. We have log of... 1,500 divided by 1,000. Close parentheses twice. Okay, I know you can write this as 1.5. That is fine. But I'm just trying to show you in case you have a fraction that you can't make into a decimal. That's your numerator divided by parentheses 12 times log of, they give you the parentheses, 1 plus... 0 0.08 divided by 12. Close parentheses twice. This is my numerator. This is my denominator. Okay, hit equals. And if you look at the fifth one, that's an 8. So we're going to round it up. 5.0852. All right, 5.0852. And since the interest was annual... The units on T are in years. Now, if you want to find out how many months, I'm going to show you that as well. 
okay? Because it was compounded monthly, we can round it off to the nearest month. That would be the most appropriate. So we know it has five years, but how many months is 0 0.0852? Well, if you did 0 0.0852, because that's how many years other than the five, and you multiply it by 12, you can find out how many months. So let me do that real quick. And that's one month. Okay, so this answer actually translates to five years and one month. Okay, that is technically the more accurate answer. All right, last one. How long will it take an investment to double if it earns 6.5% annual interest compounded daily? All right, we want the investment to double and it earns 6.5% annual interest and that is compounded daily. So we're still gonna use our formula. Um, that is A, the amount or accumulation equals the principal P times one plus the interest rate divided by the number of terms to the power of N times T. Now, we're looking to make the investment double. Okay, so if the initial investment is P, then the final amount if something doubles, that is going to be two times P. All right, and six and a half percent is the same as 6.5%. And if you move the decimal over two places, that is 0 0.065 for your interest rate, R. And finally, if something is compounded daily, that means it is compounded 365 times in one year. Okay, 365 days in a year. And they're asking how long it will take. So we are basically solving for the time T. All right, so again, the investment's supposed to double. So the amount is gonna be, remember P is what you initially invest. So the amount is gonna be two times P. And that equals P. And that's gonna be one plus R, which is 0 0.065 divided by N. It's compounded daily. There's 365 days in a year. And the way to remember this formula, the R over N part, you take the interest rate and you always divide it by how many times it is compounded. All right, so the N is 365, we said. And that is times T. We don't know T, that's what we are solving for. All right, first things first, we have a P on both sides. This is P times this, this is P times two. If we simply divide both sides by P, we can get rid of the P on both sides. All right, so we did that. So now we have two equals this stuff in parentheses. We are trying to solve for or isolate the T. In order to get the T out of the exponent, we need to take the log or natural log of both sides and use the exponent or power rule. Now on the last problem I did log, so just to prove it to you on this problem, I'll do natural log. Natural log on both sides, we're gonna do the ln or natural log of two. 
and that's going to equal the natural log of 1 plus 0 0.065, let me fix that, divided by 365 to the power of 365t. Okay, using the power rule, this 365t can be moved out front in front of the log or natural log. All right, so let's see, we have ln of two, and that's gonna equal 365t times ln, and the natural log of the part in parentheses is one, plus 0 0.065 over 365. All right, we want to isolate T. We're solving for T. T is times 365, and it's also times ln of this mess right here. The opposite of times is divided by. So I'm going to divide by 365 times ln of this right here. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So I am also going to divide by 365 times ln of 1 plus 0.065 over 365. All right, so I have my equal sign there. And what happens on the right-hand side? 365's cancel, ln of this mess cancels, and we are left with the T. And we have to do this on the calculator. I suspect we're gonna round off so I'm going to use my squiggly lines, okay? You want to have, on the calculator, you want to have parentheses around ln of 2, and you want to have parentheses on the entire denominator, okay? Otherwise, you can do ln of 2, hit equals, and then do parentheses around the denominator. Okay, you can do this in more than one step if you like, but I'm going to show you in one step in the numerator, we had ln of 2. All right, close the parentheses twice, divided by, and in the denominator, we have 365 times natural log of 1 plus 0 0.065 divided by 365, close parentheses twice. This was the numerator, and this whole thing was the denominator. We're taking the natural log of this whole thing right here. Hit equals, and let's see. If you look at the fifth decimal, five or more, you round it up, 10.6648. Okay, and that is in years. All right, and if you want to find out how many days or how many months, just multiply this portion by 12 if it's months. Last time I did days, let's do months this time. If I did 0 0.6648 times 12, because there's 12 months in a year, I get 7.98, and that's months. Okay, so if you wanted to translate this years, the equivalent of this, the equivalent of this right here is about 10 years and 7.98 months, we'll say 10 years and eight months. All right, I'm not sure what the answers are like on the homework. All right, but this is basically the amount in years and if you want to translate it, it's 10 years and 8 months.